Hello guys, today as promised we are going to take a look inside of this motor protector or motor circuit breaker. It could be also used for transformers but usually it's used for motors. Um, we are going to start to disassemble the lead. This is usually just two screws. can now lift off the top and by the looks of it this one is old looking and indeed it is old it is from I would say that's the like date code on the molding so it is probably from 2003 so it is 21 years old actually is it yeah. quite old make sure there is a crack Oop. as you can see there so it looks old. Um, to take out the circuit breaker part, you just need to like pull on this. Okay, let's uh, continue. So I was say um, this one you pull, this comes out super easy. We don't need the house anymore. The breaker has. Basically on, off, and also it's like short circuit and thermal. So the thermal current can be from 10 to 16 amp, and the instant release is 190 amps. Um, pretty typical, they all look the same basically. If I remember right to open them, you just need to like lever these sides. It actually just pulls right off. And we can take a look inside of the mechanism. And as you can see we have three heaters basically that that trip the mechanism. Now how does this oh, okay this is there is quite an interesting amount of things happening here. Basically of here the heating element this will as it gets hot bent some bimetallic strip. Now how does this exactly trip? Hmm. Ah okay. As this heats up from the overcurrent this will bend away and probably somehow trip the mechanism. Now I'm not sure how exactly. Ah, okay. It basically bends, does are like adjusting screws for the thermal trip. This will be bending away and pushing this more and more until it trips. And I guess the adjusting is changing some pivot point or spring tension. Yeah, it's changing this mechanism. Interesting. Ah, yeah, it's basically needing less to bend less if you adjust the current lower and if you adjust the current more, it needs more and the locks and there is also another coil in there, a wire. I don't know if you can see the coil right there. Get the flashlight. You see the coil in there? That's probably part of the magnetic tripping. And how does that work? Probably connected with this mechanism inside. Hmm. Oh, I want to take this farther apart. I kind of don't want to actually destroy it since those are not cheap and this one is actually new old stock. So, hmm. I 
this we're gonna get the torx and we can open the bottom hopefully not a bazillion springs will spring out just wait okay i'm back this actually could took, took me a while to find it's not in one of my regular screwdriver set it is not to be found in my like precision screwdriver set i had to resort to my like safety bit set this is like a torx number eight okay let's open this up carefully i don't know what's inside of there i guess springs contacts something like that hopefully they just don't explode everywhere let's hope Maybe they just like the magnet, okay? They like the magnet. Okay, let's be careful here. Oh, nice. Nice looking here. Okay, there is no tripping mechanism in this part. This is the... Um, uh, basically the switching part and those... Leaf thing, looking things, leaf. I would call this. These things, if it comes. I don't want to damage it. Look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. This is like an arc quenching mechanism. Very nice. Oh, there's screws under here. Oh, those holding those contacts in. Okay, okay. This is beautiful, mate, actually. This is actually a brand here. Contrast, it's not like your Chinese thing. This is like old, uh, what do you say this? New old stocks, it was not really expensive, but by the looks it is expensive. The new ones I also bought are actually expensive still, so but way back when. In 2003, this thing was probably very expensive. Um, you can see the point in there, or the contacts right in there, right in here. And then this is like the quenching mechanism. Okay, let's put this back together. Luckily, there was not a bazillion springs flying at me. And as always, if you put screws back into plastic, you turn them a little bit left until it makes a click, and then right, so you don't like re-threading it and completely shreddering the the thread in the plastic. People watching my videos, do you like the like the content of like when I'm showing insights of stuff like this switches and power supplies? If you like this, should I make more videos? Should we explore more things? And let's put this back together. those two screws out and see what's hiding inside there. Hopefully the mechanism don't explode on me. Because then it will not go back together. Mm. It's a 
catching on something and I don't like that. I managed to get one of this current trip coils out. I had to unscrew the bottom screws so I take the bottom out and now you can see the coil. It's just a few turns of a thick wire and it basically activates the mechanism. It activates the mechanism and yeah, that's all that's to it. This part does not come out easily as look, I guess it's somehow pinned we're pressed in and I guess the only way to get it out is to break it and I don't want to break it so I cannot like see anything like that would be removable could be wrong though because it looks like it was this would have to come like apart it's like a pin or something and there's like so many springs, I don't like to do this. But at least we see the main current part and those arctic quenching devices. So now I have a fun time to put this back together. I will see you when I put it back together. See you soon. Okay, I put the upper part back. We'll put this in later, but I now discovered how the over and current protection works. So as previously mentioned, when you turn it on, the, met the B metal works easily, like these drips. But how does the overcurrent work, like the current drip? On those coils that I showed before, there's like a little plunger and it pushes this like white piece of plastic, you can see it a little bit here. And if I push the plunger down, can you see that? It also trips. Uh, I mean, this should be actually like gauged, but you get the idea. Um, so if I like reset it, I have to like, it's not completely together, but like this would basically plunge down and trip the breaker, basically, this would slam open. Um, yeah, let's continue to put it back together completely and I will be back. Okay, put those quenching mechanisms back. Uh, don't forget to put these little paper things back in or plastic things in. Hope I put everything back together properly. Can always left and right so you don't destroy that tr screw thread. Much better now. Again, if you turn it on, this if this will be a low, like a thermal overload, this will bend, 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 and eventually trip. And if it's a short circuit and it pulls those plungers down, it will trip instantly, of course. So all three, all three have those. Sorry, all three have those like plunger mechanism and the, of course the thermal is just connected together so it doesn't matter which phase or loads or shorts out it will trip the breaker always. Very nice. Now if this would be some cheap thing, what I would think is, since it's using a motor, they would just include one of those thermal and short circuits, maybe the middle one and the 
to outer would be simply a contact so yeah it would be make it much cheaper of course and much less safe um, this one just is relatively easy to be put back just yeah, just actually click it back and yeah you can adjust the card let's say 10 amps and I guess that's it. Yep. Looks like everything is back together properly. Yeah. So what we should maybe try to do is to actually trip it, not like a screwdriver, but I mean like electrically trip it with a high current source and actually force it to trip so that we can see that also let me think of some okay uh, jury something I got my high current MOT rewinded I uh, mean my, my rewinded high current MOT ah, sorry I connect those I think four square my three square cables here yeah it didn't use any ferals but it's just for testing so yeah it doesn't matter and I guess most of them are installed like this, like people don't use furls, even though you should use them. But uh, this goes to my Variac power supply, mm, so we can crank up the voltage slowly and therefore crank up the current. Now I'm going to turn it on. And I remove the lead so you can see what happens. So now I'll start to crank. It's set to about 10 amp, so we definitely need to go much higher to trip it. Now this is a thermal slow trip, so it will take long, so I'm going to actually force it to not take too long by increasing the current to some something like... Let's do 4, 38 amps, see what happens. And there it tripped. This was getting hot and it bended and tripped. And as you can see, you cannot... You cannot reset it until it's overloaded now I wish I could show the short circuit um, relief release but the impedance is too high for us this is like producing one volt it's not enough you need more than one volt to get uh, enough current through the device because you need to get 190 amps through to trip it instantly but it would be the same thing just very fast like instantly but still pretty nice so is it cold enough to reset no see it doesn't allow you to reset the motor immediately i think actual normal slicker breaker is a bit faster to cool down this thing expects a motor that has more thermal mass so as you can see you cannot reset it um yeah Changed here the setup a little bit. I put more turns on the MOT, but I still doubt this will work. Um, put a clamp meter, the clamp meter here. So, um, it's on, and I'm going to give it the MOT, the MOT 270 volts straight, and it will maybe trap. I don't know if you got 190 MOT is just too weak, I think. But let me try. Three, two. One. Ah, still thermal. But wow, that was almost uh, it was almost tripping it with the. Oh, you can see that bend of now. The B metal. It was almost tripped by the short circuit. We would need a little bit more. Sadly, we cannot trip it short circuit, but still, really neat. Thanks for watching, and see you soon again. Bye. Very horrible setup. Don't connect wires like this. This was just for testing. Bye.